Sonia, a young girl from France, is ascending the stairs to her apartment holding her newborn son. The kid is crying, and to add to Sonia's frustration, her boyfriend Bruno has closed the door and, for some reason, doesn't intend to open it up. After a fair bit of pounding, a stranger couple opens up the door and impolitely tells Sonia that Bruno gave them this apartment for two nights, and they shut the door in her face. She manages to get her charger, at least. The infant calms down soon enough, and Sonia begins looking for her boyfriend. She knows where to begin, so in the next scene, she crosses a wide road full of cars driving at high speed and descends on a narrow, and steep trail, hidden in bushes. The trail leads to a shore and a small shelter, but no living soul seems to be in sight. Her friend helped her out then. He seems to know Bruno, and he brings her to him. Driving on a scooter with a newborn baby mustn't be on any mother's to-do list, perhaps, but Sonia still manages to get to her boyfriend without harming herself or her baby. When she finally sees Bruno, the latter is asking for a handout in the middle of the road. Sonia isn't mad at him at all. She shows him the baby, and they talk for a while about his name, Jimmy. She asks him to hold him too, and reluctantly, Bruno tries to follow her lead. But seeing his son for the first time seems not to excite him a lot. His thoughts are elsewhere, more specifically, he's waiting for a certain man to leave a bar on the other side of the road. This man must be Bruno's next theft target. In the next scene, both descend on the trail we saw earlier and discuss their shelter. It is a stony, cold place, not fit for a baby. Bruno has spent all the money they had too, but despite this seemingly dire situation, the childish playfulness and romance still linger in both. They'll get their apartment in two days, and the prospect of sleeping together in a warm bed forces them to be excited for the future. Sonia is so happy that she overlooks the fact that Bruno didn't visit her in the hospital even once, and he continues to hold an uninterested attitude towards Jimmy. While Sonia is feeding her baby in the next scene, we are introduced to Bruno's partners and all of his illegal activities. These are two 14-year-old boys who do most of the stealing. They are back now to split the profit in three. The man they ripped off seems to have had a significant amount of money on him, not mentioning some other devices that could be sold. But there is one box that won't be opened. Bruno has to use power to force it open, but it ends up being nothing more than a document of will. The bottom of the river will be its next home. That night, they look for a hotel to sleep in. All of the places are closed, but since Sonia's with a baby, one of the concierges lets them in. He doesn't permit Bruno to stay, though, and the latter doesn't make a big fuss about it either. He kisses Sonia and Jimmy goodbye and left the hotel. That night, while sleeping in a social shelter, somebody calls him, and he heads towards the streets once more. At a local pawn shop, he sells the video camera the kids stole earlier that day to a woman. The latter seems to know Bruno well, and they seem not to be doing such a thing for the first time. Bruno tells her about the baby, and she advises that they think about giving Jimmy up for adoption if they are not up to raising him on their own. A lot of people pay good money to adopt a baby. The next morning, he rents a convertible, buys some stuff for Jimmy, and hears from Sonia. The family is driving around in the next scene, listening to classical music so that Jimmy falls asleep, but making a lot of playful noises themselves. They seem to be in a wonderful mood. Passion and happiness are so strong that Bruno is led to stop the car so that they can let their energy out in a safer way. They discuss the matter of Jimmy's second name while struggling to catch their breaths afterwards, but the chasing continues soon. The next day, they finally get Sonia's apartment back. A health visitor arrives in the next scene, when Bruno is discussing the matter of money distribution with one of the 14-year-olds. The health visitor doesn't seem to notice anything suspicious, though. The visitor determines that they need 1,000 euros every month to attend to every child's needs. If Bruno chooses to get a simple job, he will be able to gain that much and have a decent life, but the latter has a radically unconventional opinion about the job market and employment culture in general. He won't do it. The degree of their irresponsibility is shown in the next scene, as Bruno gets an expensive matching jacket for Sonia. They sign the documents for Jimmy then, and stand in an enormous line to get benefits for the child. Here, Sonia notices Bruno's restlessness, and his will to come back tomorrow or do anything else other than stand still for the next few hours, so she lets him take Jimmy for a walk. He agrees. If the kid gets hungry, he'll surely hurry back. Lovely ladies stop him in the streets to take a look at Jimmy, but Bruno has no intention to look like a normal father. He rolls around, asking people to spare some change, hoping that the presence of the child will have a warming effect on citizens' hearts. He fails to get some money out of Jimmy in this way, however. Somebody calls him then, and he speaks in such a tone of voice, with such a vocabulary, that we get a doubt that he has his foot in some affairs we don't know about yet. After the call, we see a sudden change in his expression as he gets to a payphone station, calling the woman we mentioned earlier. While having a conversation, Bruno brings up the subject of abortion and asks her some further questions. It is clear he has a dark plan, and he wants to utilize it behind Sonia's back. Jimmy remains quiet all the way as he speaks with some official representatives and begins carrying out the adoption process. 
He stays calm on public transport too, as he's taken far away from his mother. Bruno seems to have had no second thought about this. He might just be thinking about what he's going to have for dinner as he travels through the country. He enters the adoption center in the next scene, talking on the phone with the representative, and convincing her that both the mother and the father of the child agree to give the baby away. To his credit, he's getting interested in the social and financial background of the family Jimmy is going to. Sonia calls him and he lies, saying that they are in a park, resting on a bench. It is a sad picture to imagine Sonia still standing in line, thinking that everything is okay. What we see next assures us that it is no adoption center he's walking around in. The building is empty, and Bruno tries to remain as quiet and calm as possible, so as not to wake Jimmy up. He leaves him on the floor of one of the rooms, and we understand that there is no adoption agency, there is only a only now, as he's pondering over his decision in another room, do we see a glimpse of uncertainty in Bruno's eyes. The silence becomes unbearable as his heart is filled with growing guilt. The air becomes dense, and it seems to press down on him forcefully. A heavy load lands on his shoulders, but now it is too late. When he gets back to the room where he left Jimmy, the kid is gone, and in the exact spot that he used to occupy, money is left for Bruno to take. He gets back to the city with an empty baby wheelchair. He heads towards the shack immediately, but Sonia seems to have already begun searching for him. The two of them meet in a shack, and Bruno tells her about the news up front. He doesn't lie when he says that the kid is with the people who are taking him to his new family. Sonia can't believe her ears. She keeps asking where Jimmy is, but when Bruno shares his plans to avoid legal responsibility, she realizes that it is true. He even says that they can have another child, convincing himself and his partner that what he did was morally acceptable. Sonia's consciousness cannot endure this information. However, her entire body becomes numb, and she falls to the ground. She comes to her senses in Bruno's arms, but they seem to burn her even in a half-choice state. She tries to get away and falls again. Finally, her consciousness is gone completely. She is taken to the hospital, and all Bruno is afraid of is what she's going to say when she wakes up. The cops will come, and surely, she'll have no intention not to tell them about it. She'll want her Jimmy back, and she'll fight for it. Bruno is sure that Sonia will not back down. He calls the woman again and tells her that Sonia, Jimmy's mother, has changed her mind. He hasn't touched the money yet, and he would like to have it back. He asks for a meeting outside the hospital then, and before leaving, he asks the nurse to inform Sonia that he'll soon be back with Jimmy. The frustration grows inside of him as he gets stuck between two dangers, Sonia, and the people who currently hold the baby. The only thing he can hope for is that Sonia has enough trust left in him to remain quiet about the illegal adoption and wait for him, while the people will return the baby without any problem. He arrives at a filthy garage in the next scene, where the meeting is going to be held. He's terribly anxious, attending to any kind of noise outside. So far he's alone, but soon he hears a voice coming from the upper part of the wall that is connected to the other garage. The voice is asking for the money. Bruno returns it quickly, expecting to have the child back right away. But the hand disappears from the ceiling, and for a while, Bruno hears nothing. The voice comes back then, demanding to be given Bruno's phone, and Bruno does as he is bid, but the voice doesn't answer any of his questions regarding Jimmy. He says nothing of the child, he only orders Bruno to stay put until the noise of the rumbling car disappears outside. Bruno follows this order too, and he comes outside as soon as he can. He looks around the area restlessly, checking another garage, and finds Jimmy there. Feeling blessed by God, he feels an enormous load leaving his shoulders as he starts walking away, looking for a better future where all of this inconvenience is nothing but a bad nightmare. But soon he learns that he won't get away with what he did that easily. A man appears from out of nowhere and tells him to be back here at 9 o'clock tomorrow. They lost twice as much as they paid for the child initially, so Bruno will have to buy the kid back. They will figure something out. Bruno returns to the hospital in the next scene, heading straight to Sonia, but the nurse stops him. It seems that the mother has already spoken with officers, and the detective is eager to discuss this matter with Bruno. The child is taken from him by a nurse, as he chooses not to resist. There is no point in trying to resist or run away now, the officers have been sieged by Bruno. While sitting in front of the detective, this is the explanation he comes up with, the kid isn't his. Sonia slept with some other guy, and Bruno lied to her, saying that he's baby to get back to her. Everything she is saying about the money is a lie. Bruno also says that throughout the entire afternoon today, Jimmy was at his mother's house. Naturally, the police will try to check the truth of this information, so he will need to be the first to get to her. That night, he knocks on her door. The kind of interaction we see never happens inside a family where love and mutual appreciation are present. Upon learning that her son had a child, the mother seems to be somewhat pleased, but she doesn't show any intention to invite Bruno inside, or to speak with him a little more about this news. Here, Bruno stops her to give out the darker portion of the information. Bruno says that due to a fight with his girlfriend, he had the child at his house for a while, and threatened her not to return him to her. She called the police, and now they want to know where the kid was. Bruno doesn't want to give his friends a headache, so he came to her. 
The mother has no objections. She agrees to help and lies to the police. And so, the police part of the problem is taken care of. He'll have to face no legal prosecution. First thing next morning, he waits for Sonia outside the hospital and tries to talk to her when she gets back. Sonia doesn't even look at him. She remains mute as she tries to shut the door to her apartment and his face too. But Bruno doesn't let her do that. He enters the room. Sonia tries to ignore his presence completely, and Bruno shows no intention of leaving her alone. The small apartment is filled with heavy silence. It is clear that Sonia wants him to go, but when Jimmy falls asleep, Bruno begins justifying his actions. He just thought they were going to have another one, this is the only argument he has, and naturally, Sonia remains silent. It is only when Bruno tries to touch her, holding a knife, that she turns around abruptly, and the two engage in a fight. Bruno manages to get the knife away from her, but when the two stand up again, her voice is so strongly demanding that he leave that Bruno turns around and exits through the door. The aggression coming from Sonia is purely of a maternal nature, and somehow, perhaps even unconsciously, Bruno knows that he stands no chance against it. He attempts to sell the baby wheelchair then, but without success at first. When he finally manages to get a deal for it, he only gains 65 euros. To add to the profit, he offers to sell Sonia's jacket too, and to our surprise, he agrees to take one euro in exchange. Either he is extremely desperate for money, or he stole it in the first place. With that money, he has a beer in the next scene. Suddenly the man from the black market appears in front of him, punches him in the stomach, and drags him out of the bar. Bruno didn't turn up when he was asked nicely, so now they use violence against him. It is tough to see him getting robbed to the last euro. He still has 5,000 minus 66 euros left to pay them back. Every Sunday they will see him, and he will have to give what he owes, bit by bit. Shortly after, he limps his way to Sonia's door. He apologizes and asks to be let inside, but the door stays shut, and the inside of the apartment is silent. He sits on a curb outside and cuddles up with himself to remain warm. Sonia arrives in the street. She seems to be returning home with groceries, and Bruno jumps up to meet her up front. Naturally, Sonia avoids him and doesn't listen to any of his apologies, but she is forced to stop when the ladder drops down on the pavement and embraces her knees. He screams desperately and doesn't want to hurt her, but Sonia knows better than to believe him. She knows there is no love for her in his heart. When the time comes, he will push her away from the cliff without even thinking about it. The trust is forever gone, and the door is forever closed. Bruno doesn't try to force his way inside. The last thing he does is ask for money, begging to be given some for food, but Sonia doesn't give him a dime. Covered all in cardboard, Bruno sleeps in his shelter that night, and the next morning, he manages to meet the 14-year-old kid in school. He gives him a job involving a scooter and asks him to come to the shack at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Bruno goes back to his shelter then, and plays with a metal stick before his apprentice arrives. When the latter comes, he throws it away, changes his look, and the two begin to work. Bruno seems to be in a quite cheerful mood at first, but when their first prayer arrives, he becomes more reserved and dedicated. Together, they approach an old woman and snatch away her purse. A car comes after them then, and even though it seems dedicated to stopping the thieves, they manage to escape a few times. Finally, their scooter gets stuck in a mood near one of the banks of the river, and since the pursuers might still be near, they leave it lying in the corner. They run into a clearing. On the right-hand side of them is the road, and on the left is a flowing river. They see the pursuer's car as it stops near the stairs that indicate exactly where they are, so quickly they try to hide behind some rusted construction waste. Two men start descending the stairs, and there seems to be no way to go. Feeling cornered, Bruno hides the money and gets into the cold river. The kid is extremely uncomfortable in the chilling water. He barely manages to remain quiet as the men walk around the place, and finally leave after deducing that the thieves must be elsewhere. Here, when Bruno heads towards the solid ground again, the kid falls into a state of panic and grabs onto him, leading him away from the platform and pushing him underwater. He needs a great deal of commotion and a lot of noise to finally leave the river. The kid is crying. In a petrified state, he wheezes and groans in pain and shock. Bruno rushes him into a small, abandoned building and tries to warm him up. The kid is totally numb, but Bruno doesn't stay with him for too long. He makes sure that he'll be alright, heads back to the place where he left the money, and tries to get the scooter out of the mud. After finally freeing it, he peeks out of his hiding place again and sees the two policemen checking the place out. The kid will surely cough. Bruno watches them as he is taken away, then gets on the scooter and takes it with him, leaving the dreadful place. The scooter is trashed, so Bruno is forced to roll it along heavily. He returns to Sonia then, but she doesn't open the door. What he does next is quite unexpected. He rolls the scooter to the police station and asks to be given some time with the 14-year-old boy, named Steve, who has been coughing recently. They tell him that he can only speak with him with an inspector present, and Bruno agrees to be led inside. We don't know what's on his mind yet, but soon we see him walking up to frown at Bruno and hand him back the scooter keys. Then he takes money out of his jacket, puts it on the table, and turns himself in. For the first time throughout this entire time, he does the right thing. 
After a few days, someone visits him in jail. He walks up to the table, and it is only when he finally sits down and settles in that we learn about the identity of his visitor. It is Sonya, sitting silently across the table, looking deep into his eyes. Shortly after, before they start their struggling conversation, Sonya stands up to get coffee, leaving Bruno alone to himself. The latter seems to have changed. Anxious for the upcoming conversation, he stares into the empty space in front of him until Sonya sits in her chair again. Bruno asks how Jimmy is at first, learning that the kid is okay. A sudden tide of heavy emotion hits him extremely hard, and he is taken away by the unexpected guilt. Suddenly realizing the magnitude of the pain he caused and the consequences that came after, for both him and Sonya, fills him up with irresistible sorrow. Sonya stays quiet for a while, but tears start building up in her eyes too. Bruno grabs her hands then and holds them near his forehead. This is a moment of catharsis for him, and a moment of forgiveness for Sonya. After a long time, she can see the man she loved in the person sitting across the table, and she embraces him firmly. They cry together for a long time, and a specter of colorful emotions emanates, too significant to be perfectly put into words. Two souls are reunited.